When we think of alternate endings in video games, we're already treading on rare territory. However, some stuff almost nobody sees. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 rare endings in video games. Before we get into it, we have done a similar list in the past uh, called 10 Game Endings No One Has Seen. And this list is kind of a sequel to that one, so we're not going to be talking about endings from any of these games. Uh, Shadow the Tomb Raider, Metal Gear Solid 5, Fallout New Vegas, the Dead Money DLC, the Running Dinosaur game the saboteur fez sunless sea payday 2 hollow knight or dota and pachi Daioju. so with that out of the way let's start off with number 10 sakuro's dragon homecoming ending with elden ring being the new hotness at the moment you'd kind of think that the most convoluted and rarely seen ending would be from that game but the alternate endings in elden ring are actually a cakewalk compared to from's previous game sakuro like dark souls 3 and bloodborne the requirements to get what is arguably the most difficult ending is i'm obscure to say the least nonsensical and miserable to say the most. Yeah, it pulls one of these stunts where if you progress too far into the game at a certain point, then you won't be able to get this ending. Yeah, it's it's one of those kinds of games. But in contrast to Dark Souls 3 or Bloodborne, where the endings only have a few steps, to fully complete this ending, it's a 15-step process. It's an ending so complicated that even somebody who has actually gotten the ending would absolutely have to use a guide to get it again. There's too many finicky little objectives to it. In comparison to most of the other stuff on this list, it's not even that difficult to do if you've got a guide as long as you can beat the game you can get this ending but the whole thing's so convoluted a lot of players will scroll through a guide shrug their shoulders and just look up the ending on youtube because it's such an ordeal if you're determined to see it legitimately then get used to resetting areas and talking to people oof, a lot of times like so many it seems like nothing could possibly change about what they're going to do there is a whole lot of that here at number nine is Metro 2033, uh, the good ending. Every Metro game has this obscure mechanic called moral points. If you manage to get enough, you can unlock the good ending. In later games in the series, especially Exodus, this whole thing's a little more obvious, but the original, they told you literally nothing about the whole system. The only clue that you were doing something right would just be this little flash of light and a sound to let you know you earned a moral point. Doctor hasn't said anything. The situation's under no visitor. If you didn't know this mechanic was a thing, you probably wouldn't think twice about it. So it's really easy to go through the whole game and not realize that there is a good ending. To actually get it, you need about 20 or 30 quote-unquote good moral points, which wouldn't be so bad, but you can lose them for doing certain actions as well. Like, you mostly lose points for killing human enemies or getting caught, but there's other more annoying ways to lose them. Like, it's possible to lose one for interrupting someone's business, which sounds silly, but it's actually worse because there's no dialogue prompt in the original version of the game, so just standing nearby could actually count as interrupting in some situations. Thankfully, they removed this from Metro 2013, 33 Redux, and in general, this ending is is it's it's easier to get in the updated version of the game. But the original is a huge pain, even if you know exactly what to do. At number eight is Near Automata's ending triangle. At this point, everybody and their mom knows about Near Automata's ending E, where you have to beat the game at least three times and view the four previous endings to actually unlock it. It's an ending that requires serious commitment, but in terms of rarity, kind of well known. So instead of looking at that, let's look at this incredibly weird ending that you unlock for finishing the unpronounceable DLC. Uh, we'll call it 3C, 3C, 1D for short. To unlock it, you have to beat the three arenas hidden around the world, which are all challenging in their own way. It's an interesting thing because there's nothing incredibly difficult, but it's super tedious and it's secondary on top of really just not having any story content. It's just a series of battles you participate in. So a lot of players might not bother finishing this whole thing because they might think that there's not really a reward at the end, especially when there's no kind of story progress at any point to sort of let you know that this is a, a thing that, you know, does something. Well, the thing is, is that you do get something, but it's probably not what anybody expected. After finishing all all three arenas you unlock a new quest called mysterious invitation where you can go to the amusement park and take the elevator to a new floor with a tv where you interact with and this ending starts and it is unexpected that's for sure it's the memories of a robot named plato 1728 followed by a pretty bizarre music video by the band amaze Rashi. as far as endings go it's probably the strangest one out of all of them Thank you. 
Normally the endings in the game are listed with A, B, C, D, and so on, but this one gets a special symbol, a triangle with a circle in it. What that is supposed to be, I, I don't know, but it's probably the least bizarre thing about this ending. And number seven is the ending teaser from PT. Probably the ultimate rare ending because it's not even possible to see anymore. Uh, well, I mean, not entirely impossible. If you still have the game downloaded, you can potentially see it. But for everyone else that doesn't have this demo, it's not possible to find as the whole thing's been removed from the PlayStation Network. Even if you had it and deleted it at one point, you can't get it again. It's just gone, which makes it one of the legit rarest game endings out there. So as you're probably aware, PT was a little demo released on the PlayStation Network by Konami back in 2014 as a teaser for a Kojima-produced Silent Hill game that there was a ton of buzz about until that game was canceled and the demo got pulled. What's interesting about this is that even seeing the ending to this demo is difficult. You have to solve a series of very cryptic puzzles that aren't even really hinted at much by the game itself in order to unlock it, and the progression can be confusing and fiddly. So if you do have PT, it can still be really difficult to see the ending, even if you're closely following a guide the whole time. This is an interesting one because because while seeing the ending is really legitimately difficult these days, I would guess most people watching this have seen at least some of the actual ending cutscene, especially the part that shows your character is actually Norman Reedus, the same guy Kojima eventually had play the main character in Death Stranding a few years later. So yeah, a lot of people have probably seen this ending on YouTube, but if you want to legitimately see it, it's extremely tricky for a large number of reasons. And number six is the Stanley Parables art ending. With the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition release, I think it's a fine time to bring up the rarest, most pointless video game ending pretty much ever. Basically, the point of the Stanley Parable is to try to find the different endings. That's basically the entire purpose of the game. So you'd think that this one would have been found quickly, but as you'll soon see, it takes a ridiculous level of dedication. And also, the first person who figured it out, I, I, I don't know what drove them beyond dedication. There's something else there because most people just don't have the patience for that to see it You have to go down the game's ending path where they jump off the cargo lift the catwalk and intentionally do the things The narrator doesn't want you to do at a certain point You get teleported to this room where you have to play the baby game where to keep the game going You have to press the button to stop the baby from going into the fire Yeah, it's not what you thought when you heard the words baby game if you didn't know what this was is it? It's a very meaningful game all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. At this point, you're just supposed to give up, and it's like an intentionally annoying game. It's got all these loud noises constantly playing, so for most players, you give up after a few seconds and move on with the story. But if you really, really just have to see an alternate ending, then all you have to do is, it, you, you get it, right? You keep hitting that button. And, and not like for 20 minutes, not like for 40, not for 60, not for two hours, not for three hours. It's for four hours straight. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. <laughs> Yeah, and just to make it more annoying, the narrator adds a second button at the two hour mark. So you have to also keep a dog from being lowered into a pool of piranhas while keeping the baby from going into the fire for that long, four hours straight. And you can't mess up once, because if you do, that's that. Either a baby gets burnt or a dog gets bit. And then to add insult to injury, the ending is pretty brief. Game just mostly makes fun of you for wasting so much of your life just to see if something would actually happen after four hours. But I mean, at least they bothered to put an ending there, even if it's not really worth all the effort it takes to see it. And number five is Stardew Valley's The Summit, a pretty secret one. Stardew Valley is a massive game with a ton to do, but if you somehow manage to do it all, then you can unlock a secret ending at this place called The Summit. Now, The Summit itself only becomes available after getting 100% in the perfection system, which tracks your progress throughout the game. Now, you don't have to do literally everything in the game, but you pretty much have to hit every major milestone. That means shipping one of every possible crop and forage item, finishing all the monster eradications, maxing out your skills, getting maximum hearts with every villager, finding all the star drops, the list goes on. If you actually manage to do all that, then the way to the mountain summit becomes open and you can sit on this bench that triggers the ending cutscene. 
as you would expect from an easygoing game like Stardew Valley, there's nothing really mind-blowing here, but the level of dedication needed to actually unlock this location is immense. Of course, another reason why this ending is obscure is that it wasn't actually originally in the game. It was added with the 1.5 patch on December 21st, 2020, about four years after the game actually came out. So a lot of people who played this game probably did so before the summit was even a place you could go. It's unusual for a secret ending to be added to a game so much later, especially the base game. And for that reason, this is an ending a lot of players are just unaware of. At number four is the Mass Effect trilogy's Deadliest Path. Mass Effect is a pretty popular series, so stuff like the Shepard Dies ending to Mass Effect 2 has been covered, along with how difficult it is to get the good ending in Mass Effect 3 before they updated the game. But if you're really looking for a rare and difficult ending to get in this series, look no further. Dubbed the Deadliest Path by user Coveris Alvain on the Mass Effect Wiki, they carefully plot out a path where nearly every major character is dead by the end of Mass Effect 3. Actually pulling this off is surprisingly difficult and requires a lot of seemingly random choices. Um, like obviously you'll want to kill certain characters when the choice becomes available, but a lot of other things you need to do require a special setup to pull off, and they aren't actually immediately obvious. So if you want to get the worst possible ending at the end of the trilogy, you have to play through all three games while closely following a guide, otherwise it probably will not work. If everything works out, the only major character left alive is Joker, and that is it. Everyone else is dead. I think my favorite part about this one is how much effort it takes to screw up this badly. Uh, it's tough to get the best ending, but getting the absolute worst ending is actually much, much harder. And number three is Pathfinder Kingmaker, the happily ever after ending. It's basically impossible to get the secret ending in this game without a guide because some key information, like the specific time window to enter the final dungeon, is not communicated in game even when you do research. Few games have a secret ending path as complicated and difficult as Pathfinder Kingmaker. There's a lot of reasons why. For one, the game is massive, easily taking over a hundred hours to finish normally. And there's also tons of steps you have to follow really closely to even become aware that the ending is possible. The main thrust of this ending path is you have to befriend and eventually romance this spirit called Nyrissa, who at first seems to be an ally but is actually working against you. Starting a romance with this character is a complicated process, but if you want to unlock the secret ending, you have to do a bunch of counterintuitive stuff like research curses that are normally pointless and complete specific side quests that are seemingly totally unrelated. There's even essential parts of this ending locked behind invisible skill checks, so unless you know exactly what you're looking for, you can miss out on the ending and have no idea why. And another really big issue here is bugs. This game is still plagued by bugs that make this quest much harder to complete than it's supposed to be. The subreddit for this game is filled with people trying to figure out what to do to unlock this secret ending despite the fact that extensive guides already exist. Like when detailed guides still aren't enough, your secret ending might be a little too hard or a little too secret. One of the requirements to get this ending is to enter the final dungeon in a specific time window, and the game doesn't tell you about it because there is a bug. And number two is Fallen London, seeking Mr. Eaton's name. On our previous list, I mentioned the uttermost east or salt ending in Sunless Sea, and a lot of people in the comments rightfully brought up the even more ridiculous seeking Mr. Eaton's name ending from Fail Better's original game, Fallen London. Like Sunless Sea, Fallen London is a narrative adventure game with some interesting survival mechanics. Pretty much all you're doing is reading text and making decisions, but the world they created is so unique and engrossing it doesn't really matter. The world building in Fail Better's games is second to none, and that's what makes this absolutely insane ending so fascinating. Generally, how Fallen London works is that you can pursue different storylines, which basically work as quests. During these, you usually get some kind of reward or benefit, but not with this one. Before starting the story, you literally get a message saying, Seeking Mr. Eaton's name is a story of mystery, obsession, and self-destruction. It doesn't play by the same rules as the rest of Fallen London. It's capricious, difficult, and very unfair, and there will be no happy ending unless you abandon the quest. Don't begin the story unless you're prepared to regret it. And they aren't kidding at all when they say all this. To fully complete this quest, you have to spend a ton of resources on actions that will pretty much permanently ruin your character before making them totally unusable by the end. The whole thing is massive, with a ton of false starts and ways to halt your progress. Basically, the only reason anyone would do it is because they don't have anything better to do, or because they're hopelessly curious. What's especially noteworthy about this ending, though, is that the developers have specifically requested that nobody publicly share what actually happens at the end, so just seeing this thing isn't quite as easily available online as most of the other entries on this list. Nothing good comes from this ending, though. That said, developers know that if you put in a secret ending, people are going to want to see it, consequences be damned.
And finally, at number one is Noida, the amulet of Yendor ending. Noida is a fun little roguelike with one of the most ludicrous secret endings I've ever seen. Getting the regular quote unquote secret ending is hard enough. There's normally 11 of these orbs of true knowledge hidden around this randomly generated world, which you need to get the good ending. But to get the really good ending, you have to get 33 of those orbs, which can only be obtained in the new game plus, and finding the west and east parallel worlds, which is incredibly difficult to say the very least. If you've played this game, you know what we're talking about here. For many players, just getting the standard orbs is hard enough, let alone getting the 33. But if we're talking about rare endings, and the final one called the Amulet of Yendor ending is just unbelievable. How do you get it? I mean, do you really want to know? There's actually a 34th possible orb to get, and the only way to get it is to find it in one of these super rare great chests. The chance of finding an orb in one of these chests is actually genuinely only one in 10 million. Seriously, it's it's that rare. And remember, you still have to get the other 33 orbs without dying on top of getting lucky. Like just to compare, the odds of getting struck by lightning in a given year are about one in 1.2 million. The odds of getting attacked by a shark is something like one in 3.7 million. And the odds of finding this item in an already super rare chest are one in 10 million. You're more likely to get struck by lightning while a shark is chewing on you than you are to see this ending legitimately. As far as endings go, I don't know if it gets more rare than that. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.